Hey, what's up, bugs and girls? We are going to talk about solving systems of equations today. And we're gonna actually talk about linear equations. So this is even easier. I was gonna say that this is review from Algebra 2, but this is actually from Algebra 1. This is your like freshman math class. Uh, some of you who were in honors, but decide, you know what, I'm not gonna do all that hard work. This is probably from like your seventh or eighth grade math class. That's, that's how old it is. So hopefully it's pretty easy for you guys. So we're gonna talk about three types, substitution, elimination, and graphing. Um, so, you know, it, it should be pretty easy. I've got an example of each, and then we'll talk about the special cases you need to watch out for. But we'll get you in and out of here in probably an hour and a half. Just kidding, but maybe not. So let's talk about your vocab first. Linear equation, that just means that your largest exponent is one. Linear means straight line. So the equations we're gonna look at today are y equals mx plus b type equations, slope intercept form. So it just means no x squareds. That's bad, we'll talk about that manana. Substitution, I debated whether or not to put these on here, but my brain thought, mm, why not? Por que no los dos, you know, why not just put them both there? Um, so substitution, what we're gonna do is we're going to replace a variable with an expression from another equation. So if you have like y equals two x, and then over here you have like y equals three x minus one, we're gonna take what this y equals and we're gonna plug it into that y. Cause I mean, they're both y, right? So you just take this thing, stick it in there, call it a day, it'll be easy. The other like, algebraic way to solve this. If you're not gonna do it graphically, you're gonna do it algebraically. The other option is elimination. So all you're gonna do is line up your terms, then you're gonna add the equations together, and hopefully one of the variables cancels out. If it doesn't, you're gonna to need to do a little bit of multiplying to get it to cancel out, but I believe in you guys, you can probably multiply. So let's go take a peek at some examples. This first one, we're gonna do substitution as the uh, title would insinuate. So for substitution, the way you are going to know that you should, that the problem wants you to use substitution or the teacher who wrote the problem intended for you to do substitution. Do you see how your terms aren't lined up? We have y, x equals and then numbers. Because we have these equals not lined up, they cross through another group, that means the elimination is gonna be cheeks here and you don't wanna try it because it takes extra work. The other way you kind of know that you want to use substitution as opposed to any other method is because you have a variable isolated already, which means we can just take this chunk and plug it into the other equation. So those are kind of ways you can know to use substitution, but if you wanna force it to be one of the other ones, you can, it's just you're choosing to do extra steps for not really any reason. So we're gonna take this expression and plug it in there. When we do that, I like to replace this variable with parentheses first, then copy the rest of it, plus five X equals six. Then I fill in the parentheses with whatever I'm substituting this is how I make sure that I don't accidentally forget something because I'm not super smart and I forget a lot of stuff, right? So we do our substitution. We took this y, it's the same thing as three x minus two and we put it in that y. Now we just have to simplify this and solve for x. So the first thing we see is these parentheses don't really do anything. They're just here for organization. So we'll get rid of those and then we'll combine some like terms. So we have three x, minus two plus five x equals six. Three x plus five x, these are like terms because they're both x's to the first power. So three plus five is eight x. Bring down our minus two equals six. Now we're trying to get x by itself. So I'm gonna move the two over by adding two on both sides. Those cancel, of course. So we have eight x equals eight. And then we just divide both sides by the coefficient of x to get the x by itself. So x equals eight over eight, which is one. All right, 
So we have the x part. What we're doing is trying to figure out if I graph this and I graph this, where do they cross at? I know how far over they are, but I wanna know how high up are they when they cross. So we need to go find the y value as well. This is actually like 80% done at this point. You've done the really hard part right here. Now you just have to do the easy part where we take our x value and we're gonna plug this back into one of our equations. It doesn't matter. You could plug into the top one or the bottom one, but because we're looking for y and this y is already by itself, that tells me that'll be a little bit easier to do. So let's plug in our x. So we have y equals three times one minus two. And we're gonna just simplify. So three times one is three minus two, that's one. So if I graph these two equations, they're gonna cross at the ordered pair one, one. Cool, there you go. This is your first example, pretty easy, right? All right, let's look at another one. Um, this one is set up for elimination and we can tell because we have our y's stacked up, our equal signs stacked up, our x's stacked up, and then our constants stacked up. See how none of these groups cross each other? That means elimination is probably the best way to go. But again, we do have a variable isolated, y is by itself right here. So it wouldn't be that hard to take this and plug it in there. So you could do substitution if you felt like it, but just for the sake of teaching you all the different options, we're gonna go ahead and do elimination here. Now, unfortunately, nothing's gonna eliminate. If I add these right now, two plus one, right? The invisible coefficient of one, that's three y equals four minus three is one x. Okay, that's not good because we have two variables still. It's called elimination, something should eliminate. So what we have to do is make either the x's or the y's cancel by multiplying one of these equations by a constant or just a number. So if I wanna turn negative three into a four or a negative four so that these cancel, that's kinda of hard because I'm gonna have to multiply by a fraction. So it's easier to turn one into a negative two to cancel this y. So we're gonna multiply this whole equation by negative two, and we're gonna multiply it to everything, not just one side of the equal sign, the whole thing. So when we do that, we're gonna get negative two y equals negative two times negative three is positive six x. Negative two times six is negative 12. So this is our new equation we're gonna use. And we got it by multiplying the bottom one by negative two. I'm gonna just copy this over here. So we have two y equals four x minus six. Now we're gonna add these two equations. And when I say add, I mean combine like terms with whatever sign the coefficients have. So we are adding, but sometimes it helps to think about like subtracting, like when we have plus a negative two, right? So two minus two is zero. These cancel, so we have zero equals, four plus six is 10 x, and then negative six minus 12 is negative 18. All right, great. So now we have to get x by itself. So we're gonna move the 18 over by eight, adding 18 to both sides. These 18s cancel. So we have 18 equals 10 x. And then to get the, ten, uh, the x by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by 10. All right, so these cancel and we have x equals 18 over 10. We can reduce this, two goes into both of these. That'll be nine over five. So again, we have half of our answer, nine over five. So we're 80% done with this problem. Now we just have to take this thing and plug it back into either equation to solve for y. Um, and if you want, you could plug it into that new one you got after multiplying, but because we're looking for y here, it's gonna be easiest to use this bottom equation because the y is already by itself. So we're gonna plug this into here and then we'll simplify. So we're gonna have y equals negative three times nine over five 
plus 6. All right. 3 times 9 over 5. This is going to be negative. 3 times 9 is 27 over 5 plus 6. Okay. So now we want to turn this into a fraction with a matching denominator. So what number divided by 5 is 6? It's 30. So y equals negative 27 over 5. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of this by 5 to make it a matching denominator. So we get plus 30 over 5. So negative 27 plus 30 is 3 over your matching denominator. So y equals 3 over 5. And this is the ordered pair where these two functions are either solved at the same time, meaning if you plug these numbers into both of them, you'll get a true statement, or it's where these two graphs would cross. Either way you want to think about it. One's kind of visual, one's kind of mathy, but you know. All right, last example. We can solve these by graphing, and this might be a good way to solve stuff if you get stuck and you're not really sure how to solve it. You could always graph both of these, as long as you know how to graph them. And then you could just look at where they cross. So for this first equation, our slope is 1 half and our y-intercept is 4. So we're going to go up to 4, and then we're going to graph this. So we're going to go up 1 over 2. Uh, up 1, oh, whoops, 1 is too slow. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. We can go down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. Oh wait, hang on, that's kind of, whoops, hang on, I messed those up a little bit. Sorry, down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, there we go. So there's our first graph. Now if I want to graph this, it's not in y equals mx plus b form or slope intercept form. Our plus b is on the wrong side. So we need to move that thing over. So we're going to just subtract 3 from both sides. These cancel. y equals negative 3x. And then there's not anything here, so we just bring down the minus 3. Right? These can't combine because they're not like terms. But oh well. So now we have a y-intercept of negative 3. So we're going to go down 3, put our point. Then our slope is negative 3 over 1. So we have rise and run. So we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. And then I'm out of graph room. So i got to go the other direction. So we're going to go up 3, left 1. So 1, 2, 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3, left 1. And then right there, because I put a dot on the other graph, that's going to be my solution. That's the ordered pair I'm looking for where they cross. So the answer to this one is the ordered pair negative 2, 3. And there you go. So there's the three ways that you can solve these. Um, unfortunately, math teachers are jerks. And there are some special cases that we should be aware of. So let's look at these two last examples really quick just to make sure you know what's going to happen if something weird happens. So I'm going to do substitution on both of these just because I think it makes life easy. Um, and then we'll see where it takes us. So these are both y equals. I'm going to go ahead and set this equal here. I'm going to plug it into that one. So we have 2x minus 3 equals 2x plus 4. Now we're going to solve for x. So let's get all our x's on one side and all our numbers on the other. So I'm going to add 3. Actually, no, I won't. Let, let's back up. Let's just move the x's. So I'm going to move this 2 over. So minus 2x minus 2x. Oh, those cancel. These also cancel. Negative 3 equals 4. Okay, that's bad because... Negative 3 doesn't equal 4, first of all. And it's also bad because the x disappears and there's nothing left for me to solve for. I can't get x if it's gone. So if you are doing this and your variables cancel out so that there's none left, and you get a false statement at the end, what this means 
is that these two lines never touch. And you can kind of see that from the equations maybe. Uh, they have the same slope, which means they're parallel, but this one starts at four on the y-axis and this starts at negative three. So what they're gonna look like is that. So if our solution is where they intersect and these are parallel so that they never intersect, there can't be a solution. So anytime you get a false statement like this when you're solving, what it means is that there is no real, mm, let, let's not even do that. Let's just say no solution. It's impossible for them to both be solved at the same time because they don't ever cross. Okay, let's look at the other weird one. Um, I lied to you guys. We're gonna do elimination on this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move, uh, let's move this X over. Now let's move that one over. So I'm gonna move this X over by subtracting three X on both sides. So we're gonna have two Y equals negative three X plus four. And then to get these to eliminate, I'm gonna to need to multiply the bottom equation by two so that I get these to cancel out. All right, so we're gonna multiply by two. So two times two is four y equals two times negative three is negative six x. And then two times four is eight. All right, so now we're gonna take this equation and add it to this equation. So we have negative four y equals six x minus eight. We're gonna add them. Four y minus four y cancels, that's zero equals negative six x plus six x is zero, that cancels, and eight minus eight is zero and that cancels. So if everything cancels like this, you get zero equals zero. This is a true statement, zero does equal zero. So what that's telling us here is that these two equations are the same line. If you graph them, you're gonna get a line like this, and then you're going to get a second line like that that lays on top of it. So they're touching here and here and here and here. They touch everywhere. The whole thing is touching. So this means there are infinite solutions. And those are kind of the two special cases that you can get. Either they won't touch so there won't be a solution or they're gonna be overlapping or coinciding. That's the special math word for this. And there are infinite solutions because they go on for infinity and touch everywhere. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad for you. If you guys have questions, be sure to ask me in the WebEx. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Stay out of trouble. Make sure you pet your dogs.